It is time for episode 70 of Gimme the Hot Sauce. Stacy getting ready to hit the road, so we're going to bring you something a little bit different this week. We know that uh, all our fans out there really enjoyed the interviews that we did with DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine and Alex Caruso, Io DeSumo. So we're going to bring you some clips from some of those in case you missed it, give you a chance to enjoy those one more time. Stacy is going to be on the road out west. Is Dawn going with you this time? We haven't discussed it. Oh, I haven't discussed it. I don't want to bring up a sore subject. Or well, anything. no, no, because we're having a hard time finding someone to watch the dogs. Oh, that's yeah. Because now, because my son, who would normally be watching dogs because he's working from home, now is working in the office. He's gone back to the office. So if, you know, Don is gone, there's no one there to watch the dogs during the whole day. Right. And so, you know, having two young little puppies. Uh, by themselves, that could be very dis- <laughs> that could be very disastrous <laughs> coming home to no telling what we'd be coming home to. Well, especially during episode sixty nine, you got a phone call about some ointment. Is uh... yeah, some <laughs> o- <laughs> America. It's not what you think. Okay, it's dog ointment. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah. So so Kobe's got some allergies going. We've just oh, found man. out that he may be allergic to chicken. And oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, because Don cooks, especially cooks their meals mm-hmm. every every week so she stands over the kitchen and she she like everything's healthy it could be steak it could be pork it could be salmon uh potatoes everything is like healthy in it dogs eat like kings they eat like humans you you could actually eat the food that she gives the dogs (laughs) uh because what happened was you know we were paying for dog food that was made like that and you get like a little bag of dog food and you're paying like 200 and something dollars for like three bags, three little bags of dog food that was like in a Ziploc bag. And so the dogs will go through it in one eating. So it's like, well, damn, we started figuring like, we can do this too. And the dogs, yeah. I can make that. I can make it. I used to make my dogs, you know, food. So she goes to Costco. She buys, you know, we buy all this, all the ingredients. And then Don's in there doing her Chef Boyardee impersonation. She's in there cooking. She's putting potatoes in there. She's putting chicken. <laughs> she's putting. So we just found out that they're allergic to chicken. Okay. Uh, Kobe's allergic to chicken. So he started to break out a little bit. So we had to change his diet. He can no longer eat chicken. So it's just, you know, red meat, pork, and uh, salmon. That's it. But they do eat pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sure your dogs will be well taken care of when you're on the road. Uh, the two feature games on that trip, Utah on Wednesday, Phoenix Suns on Friday, those are going to be two tough games against two of the best teams in the league. Well, I mean, both those teams are playoff caliber teams. And, you know, Phoenix, with the way they're looking, you know, they look like a, a team that can win the championship. You know, they were very close to winning it last year until Giannis came back and, you know, and, and came back from that knee injury and kind of turned the whole series around. Um, but, you know, Chris Paul's out with injury. You know, they just got Devin Booker back uh, from the um, COVID protocol. So, they're, and they've been playing well without those guys. You know, that team is very deep. It's, it's a very good basketball team. They've got a lot of great complimentary players that fill their roles. Uh, Jay Crowder's, you know, has done a great job for them, uh, gives them toughness. Is probably, the you know, the guy that makes them, you know, that people – have to respect them because he's the tough guy on the team. And then you got Mikael Bridges, who's playing well, could be uh, defensive player of the year. You know, mm-hmm. he's that good defensively. And then you got Booker. Booker is, you know, arguably one of the best, you know, two guards in the league and capable of having big nights. So our hands are going to be full. And it'll be a good test for us because the Bulls need to start beating some of these good teams. They need to, <clears throat> they need to get off that, you know, whatever their record is against good teams, they need to, you know, this would be a really good win for them to come off on this road trip and really do well and and come back with a winning record. I know you uh, remember the experience when you guys lost in game seven to the Pistons and that fueled you going into the next season. I think that's what's going on with Phoenix. They won the first two games in the finals against Milwaukee and then lost four in a row. And and you can see almost that – from that moment on, their dedication has been ramped up. They want to win this title in the worst way to show that they, they should have won last year and they're going to get it this year. Well, Mark, once you get to that pinnacle, when you get all the way to the championship game and you don't win, you know, you start questioning yourself, what could we have done better? What, yeah. did, we, what did we leave unfinished? And once you get to that level, you don't want to go back down the mountaintop. 
you want to stay up there. So their whole mindset has been, you know, especially with Chris Paul, because Chris Paul is chasing the championship. So he, he's, I mean, he's probably the hungriest guy on that team. And so they feed off of that and they want him to win. You know, Monty Williams is, is, is a great coach. They want to win for him. So they've got a lot of different things that they're playing for, not just the championship, but for the guys who, who they feel deserve it. And they felt like last year they let one get away from them. They, they played really, like you said, they played really good in that first two games. Looked like they might have even swept the Bucks. Um, but then Milwaukee came back and won four straight. But um, they're a different team this year because they got that experience. You know, they, they you know the one thing they've got going for them um, that's really kind of surprising because you know um, DeAndre Ayton is under you know his contract's up and they didn't re-sign him. And it's interesting that he's. It shows you the focus that he has and having Chris Paul on the team to not let that be a distraction because in some places that would have been a distraction. Oh, you don't want to pay, pay me, then trade me. You know, that kind of thing. And the guy would be, guy would be pouting. And I, I give him a lot of credit. He's just letting his play do the talking. And with Chris Paul being out right now, he's a big focal point in what they're trying to do to keep that, that boat afloat. And he's been playing really, really well. And they've picked up a couple of big guys in McGee and Biombo, giving them some depth behind eight. And they kind of got beaten up in inside last year in the finals uh one of their players Osarich went out with an injury and they they were shorthanded and that's ultimately might have been what turned the tide in that they don't commit the same mistake they've loaded up on the front line well and and you know what they're they're a team that's that's playing ahead I mean they're they're looking at what could possibly be like you know when they see out west it's like okay who do we look out west that could give us problems let's just say the Lakers because they they basically everybody thought the Lakers were going to be in the finals this year you know who do we have that can guard AD now we've got multiple players that can guard AD so we're not worried about them. You know, who's going to guard Jokic? They played them last year. Jokic didn't have, you know, the best series, but he's still, you know, still an all-star caliber player. They have now loaded up on guys mm-hmm. that not only do they give you extra fouls, but they're athletic bigs. You know, uh, McGee is athletic. You know, Biombo's athletic. Um, you know, they can go small ball, you know, five if they want to. If they want to play, if they want to put, you know, uh, you know, Jay Crowder down there to play the five spot. They can do that. They, they've got so many different guys they can run at these big, big guys. And then what's the possibility? Like, hey, what if we meet Philadelphia? What if we meet Giannis again? You know, they've got guys now. And they got 18 and, fouls and, to Exactly. Use. <laughs> 18 fouls to use against those guys. So yeah. um, they, they thought ahead. I mean, that's, you know, that's that's what championship teams do. They, they look ahead to what if we play certain guys. So that's coming up on Friday, the Bulls against the Phoenix Suns. I want to thank some of our sponsors as we get ready to bring you some of the uh, great interviews we've done in recent weeks, starting with Howard Ankin. Chances are, if you live anywhere in Chicagoland, you've seen Howard on a bus, train, billboard, or TV commercial with a famous Chicago athlete like the one he did recently with our Io DeSumo. Howard is everywhere, so if you've been injured at work, in a car, truck, or rideshare accident, make sure to call Howard. He's a third-generation attorney from Chicago. His number is an easy one to remember. It's 312-6MILLION, so if you have any legal needs for a personal injury attorney, contact Howard Ankin at 312-6MILLION. We also want to thank Jeff Vukovic, who's been with us for a number of months now. Jeff, of course, sponsors all the great Chicago sports programming you see on NBC Sports Chicago. When it comes to insurance for your home, auto, or business, contact the king of insurance, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic at jeffvuk.com. That's Jeff. V-U-K.com. Stacy, we're making you sing the jingle one more time, but I sure, I'm sure you don't mind for our good friend Jeff. No, I don't. Nationwide is on your side. A little bit extra for episode 70, <laughs> and now we are going to let you enjoy some of the great interviews we've done in recent weeks with the Bulls stars. That is coming up here on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Hit us, DJ Bob. <laughs> Young guy out of USC, and you had so many great years with the Raptors, went to the conference finals, had a great partnership there with Kyle Lowry, and became, you know, one of the most popular players in in that franchise's history. And then, you know, you got traded to San Antonio, and I think people kind of forgot about you. Did you did you get the sense that that people, you know, you're still an elite player in your prime, and people were thinking, well, whatever happened to Mar DeRozan? He kind of disappeared, and now you're back in Chicago. All of a sudden, people seem to be surprised when you've been doing it all along. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you look at it from, you know, everything that went on. Obviously, I was I was in a place um, in Toronto where I thought I was going to be forever. Um, how things transpired there, you know, winning a championship, 
without me there, yeah. you know, kind of like clouded so much stuff from, from the normal person eye, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure anybody that's in depth that just pays attention and understand, you know, um, basketball on a whole different level would definitely see and understand that, you know, I kind of, you know, evolved when I went to San Antonio, you know, um, but you know, from the naked eye, people look at it like, oh, he left, they won a championship, blah, blah, blah. Whatever narrative you could put around it, you know, it, it was easy to indulge in that instead of seeing what was going on in real time. So for me, it was it was, it was was an opportunity for me to be challenged as a basketball player, learn so much more underneath one of the greatest coaches of all time. And every moment I shared there was 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 one I would never forget because it put me in a place where I needed to evolve as a basketball player and pop did everything and every little bit for me while I was there. And, you know, I got to give him so much credit for even putting me in a position that he, he put me in to help me grow. Like I, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, playing with MJ, you know, MJ seemed like he had a pulse for what anybody said about him. Like great players know what people are saying. If someone's talking bad about them, either their inner circle will tell them, give that message. And I felt like, you know, you're playing this season with a chip on your shoulder because of what everyone said. And I know, you know, deep down, you're like, you know, I got to do what I do. This is what I've been doing. But as a player, listening to people say, oh, it's the worst signing in the history, blah, 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 blah. That had to sting a little bit to now yeah. you're, now you're looking at it like, I can't believe y'all did, did not know this is who I was because, right. and I think, and, and it hit on your earlier point is when you left Toronto and you, you know, you could have said, Hey, I want to go play for a bigger market. I could have wanted to want to go to Los Angeles. All the big stars who played in Toronto wanted to leave. You were the, just the opposite. You were willing to stay there for your whole career. You were, you know, on and off the court, you were big and to, to get traded right when you're at the cusp of winning it, I think people said, well, the reason why they didn't win was because DeMar. That wasn't the reason why they didn't win. You know, you, it's more than just one individual. So I know probably coming in, you know, this is this is a situation where you probably wanted to say, hey, let me show you who I really am. I'm on a team that was barely winning last year, and now I'm part of something special. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's 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 what it come. And, you know, a lot of, lot, lot of that, that that been going on over the years, for me, you have to have patience because, you know, you wanted to jump out there and, and be vocal about certain yep. stuff. But for me, it was just like, all right, I'm going to learn whatever I need to learn. I'm, I'm going to continue to work my ass off and evolve as a player and in due time, whenever the masses of people who feel like they're not seeing me, they'll get a chance to see me and understand, you know, wh what's been going on and how it, it never stopped, you know. And I think that's just what a position where, where – I am now, you know, it's crazy. I don't think I never said this other than like my close circle, you know, after I got traded, you know, I, for for a long time, you, you, you fight, you go through so much to try to figure out why something happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I think I'm at that point now. It's like, I got traded for this moment, you know what I mean? Like, and that's kind of how I look at it. Like you, you kind of got to climb to the mountaintop and get your hands stepped on and fall down and figure out how to get back up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that it just showed me how to be more resilient and, and just keep pushing and keep fighting. And I think that's just where I'm at now. Well, speaking of the mountaintop, uh, the Bulls have already climbed to the top of the Eastern Conference, which is probably ahead of schedule in most people's eyes. Some people thought it might be a little bit of a, a growing curve as you guys develop team chemistry, but it's happened much quicker than anyone could have expected. We're hit close to the halfway point of the season now. How much better can this team get as we approach playoff time? Okay been so much better you know and that's the crazy thing because you know like I said I, I I'll be lying to you to tell you that I felt we would get it this quick you know and and where we at now dealing with we we was one of the first team to get hit with COVID yeah. you know we lose one of our you know young stars Patrick Williams early in the season we have guys out hurt um you know we we, we dealt with so much up and down um health wise and we still at where we at now in this, and you know, I just can't wait till we have all our guys to go out there, do what we know what we could do, what we worked on, what we, you know, made the commitment to first day of training camp with all the guys. So for me, we, we got a long way to go, you know, um, for us these last couple of weeks, not having our two best defensive players, 
you know, and still be able to manage and pull 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 these games out, you know, um, speaks volumes to the team that we are. And once we get those guys back, you know, we 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 got a lot more to prove. Now it's it's well documented your relationship that you had with Kobe, um, Kobe Bryant, the late great Kobe Bryant. And I've always said from since I've seen you play, like you about the closest thing I've seen to what Kobe did on the court. Because, you know, back in the day, it's like, who's the next Michael? Oh, he's got Michael's move. They were saying that about Kobe. And and Kobe did emulate MJ. And it looks like in your game, you have some of Kobe in your game. I mean, even in the broadcast, I'll yell when you hit a fadeaway. I'll yell, Kobe! You know, because I, <laughs> yeah. I know deep down in your head, you might, you might be saying the same thing, Kobe! So I'll say it for you. So tell, tell us the impact that Kobe's had on, on your life and, and, and what it meant to you to have that relationship with the late, great Kobe. Um, I mean, before I even had a relationship with him personally, Colt was, you know, my 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 consistent imagination. You know, I'm, I mean, I was I was young and I'm old enough to remember Jordan, but I remember Kobe first rookie game. You know, and I remember watching every single game. So, me being from LA and kind of the only game we could watch, not having cable, was the Lakers. So. My 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 whole imagination started with Kobe. Everything I seen him do from the fadeaways to I remember I used to always want an afro when I was a kid and, and push it back. <laughs> like, like Kobe. So, you know, he 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 was my my imagination in in the in the fadeaways and in the dunks and everything. So it started there because I started emulating everything I seen him do as a kid, you know, and by the time I was 15, 16 to have a personal relationship with him. And that that to grow and to personally be taught by him and get a get an understanding from him how the game should be played, the work ethic, everything that comes with it, it just it is it's like a dream come true, you know. Um and I think that's why you see so much in my game because my foundation, everything was built off him. Speaking of you know, uh, mannerisms and things that you pick up from other guys, I might be reading this wrong, but when you come back on the court after a timeout, are you Kissing both wrists, or am I seeing that wrong? Is, is there some yeah, meaning behind I, I kiss, that? Yeah, I kissed my daughter's name. Oh, okay. okay. I was okay. wondering about it. I knew there had to be a story Nobody there. never asked me that. Nobody never asked me that. Yeah. <laughs> really? No one's ever yeah, asked I, you that? Yeah, I kiss, I kiss my mom's name and my daughter's name. Well, it means a lot more now. Yes, it does. It does. I thought maybe you were saying, okay, left wrist, you got to help me because right wrist isn't doing the job. No, right no, now. no, no, no. That's crazy. <laughs> Nobody never asked me that. Yeah, I kissed my mom's name and my kid's name. That's, that's great. That's awesome. cool. That's Welcome back to the Game of the Hot Sauce podcast. You know, Stacy always uh, ends a broadcast after a win with Drive Home Safely. And we want Zach Levine to uh, drive safely while he's uh, visiting with us here on the game. You know, Zach, you've you've improved each and every season in the league. And I know that a lot of Bulls fans were saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, when are you going to win? And you've done such a great job of leading this group, coming back and playing so unselfishly. Did you ever wonder why people were wondering – is Zach an empty calories kind of player that he's not going to lead us where we need to go? I mean, I, I let certain things drive me, but I also don't listen to, you know, I don't know how much you guys cuss on the show. I don't listen to bullshit. So, um, <laughs> let it rip, baby. Yeah. It, it really, it doesn't, it doesn't concern me, man. I let certain things motivate me, but you know, that's, that's what you're placed in the league. Sometimes, sometimes you have to play the cards that you're dealt. And when you're, you're a successful player, or a talented player and you're on a losing situation, but you're doing well, you get criticized for it. Um, and it, it, it hurts. I want to be a winning player and I always have been growing up in um, the circumstances that you have to try to lead your team to wins. And, you know, getting help this year has been, you know, the best thing in the world for me, being on the Olympic team, having that experience with, you know, players of your level and better than you and then going out there and see how it works and, you know, how you have to sacrifice for winning and, how winning cures everything. It's been it's been great for me. So, um, you know, I, I never understood it, but you know, I play the cards as dealt. I I keep my head down. I keep working. I tell you know, I try to make people uh, eat their own words. Well, and that, you know what? That's the one thing I, I noticed this year. I watched you this summer with the Olympic team. And the one thing I took away from that is, is that everybody knows you can score. You know you can score on anybody in the world. That's not even an issue. But I thought you recognized, like, in order for me to get in this rotation and get consistent minutes, 
I'm going to have to play defense. I'm going to have to do little mm-hmm. bitty things to get on the floor because we got so many guys that can score. And I thought yeah. you you did a great job fighting over screens, doing things that people may not thought you could do, and it's carried mm-hmm. over this year. I think your defense, because we always talk about being a two-way player. We've always said on the yeah. bus and talked about being a two-way player. And this year, I, I said on the air, I said, man, this kid is really showing people he can play on both ends. He's getting in front of people. And I thought that experience with the Olympic team really helped. Yeah, no, it was incredible because, you know, just like what you said, that everybody can score on that team. You're playing with the, some of the 12 best players in the world. So, and you almost had to figure out your roles and, and your and your, and your your minutes on that team. We had Kevin Durant, you know, who was going to be the lead scorer, getting most of the shots. And then you had guys like Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, um, you know, me, you know, you have a bunch of guys that, you know, average over 26, 27 points per game, but you're not going to be in that same role. So just for me, OK, look, coach, I'll, I'll I'll pick up and play defense all the whole time. I'll be the one trying to take charges or dive on the floor, which I haven't had that role before, but gave me a, a little bit of an insight to when I get back to the Bulls and on my regular team, it's uh, it's going to add a nuance to my game that I might not have to do it every single possession, you know, like I was in the Olympics, but. You know, I, hey, look, I got Bradley Beal this, you know, this game. Or, you know, well, look, I, I got James Harden, so you go guard KD. And it'll it, it'll help our team in the long run. Zach, I'm curious uh, how much you, you were involved in, in some of the off-season maneuvers. Uh, Arturis is kind of the international man of mystery. He doesn't say a lot in, in the press, and <laughs> yeah, he keeps yeah. his cards close to the vest. But, man, he turned over this roster in the span of two years. It's just uh, you and Kobe that are left from the, the original group that he inherited. Um, yeah. You talk about bringing in dogs, you know, Alex Caruso, Lonzo Ball, Derek Jones Jr. These guys, these guys will battle you tooth and nail. And, and how much is that, yeah. that style of play really impacted the, the team's success on the court? Big time. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I'm able to hear some of the things that go on. I'm At the end of the day, look, I'm a player and I go out there and I do my job and I let everybody else do their job. That's what, that's what we get paid to do. But, um, I hear some nuances. They give me some tips on, you know, hey, Zach, do you like this guy? Or, you know, do you do you like the way this fits? Uh, another guy that that is a big help, he's injured right now, that's been, you know, somebody that doesn't show up on the box score, but you miss him dearly at Javante Green, yep. a guy like that, where it's just like he's a straight dog. He'll fight, he'll run through a wall for you, and he makes all the little plays. So, you know, having guys like that on the roster, um, AC coming from championship winning pedigree, you know, playing with LeBron and, you know, just his IQ, <clears throat> Zoe's IQ, his feistiness, it's helped all of us. And it and, and it's also taught us, like, okay, there's some different that we weren't used to playing this way. And, um, you know, that's why I said I still, I still think that we can get even better because we're still only, you know, what, 35 games in. Well, this is a brand new team. <clears throat> Welcome, Io DeSumo, and you've already reached a landmark in Chicago. You've already done a commercial with Howard and as a rookie. That's pretty good stuff. What was that experience like for you? Uh, it was a fun experience, um, definitely. Um, really been my first commercial. I'm in the city, so um, going through that whole experience, that experience was, was very fun. Um, I was able to, you know, connect with him, and um, I was able to um, be a relationship with him and his and his cast, and um, it was fun. When I first seen the commercial, uh, my family saw the commercial also. Um, it was excited because I, I was like my actor. <laughs> Stacy did that commercial with Howard as well, and you're going to have a lot more opportunities coming in the marketing field, my friend. The people love you in Thank Chicago. You. I mean, when when you're introduced, that crowd goes wild. We hear the from Chicago, like uh, Derrick Rose made famous. Oh uh, yeah, um, that's just the love the city shows. Um, Io, you were a first-team All-American at Illinois, led the team to a number one seeding in the NCAA tournament, and then on draft day, you had to wait until the 38th pick overall to hear your name announced. Take us through that night, and now, really, the, the I don't want to use the word vindication, that's not probably accurate, but the fact that you've been named to the Rising Star game, people are talking about you as a, as a top five, top ten rookie in this class. What has that whole whirlwind experience been like for you? Yeah, I mean, to go back to draft day, um, I promised myself that, you know, once the draft week came, I wasn't going to stress anymore because I know I put so much work each and every day, two a day, three days in Miami training, waking up early, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., going from gym to gym, shooting shots, lifting weights, 
that, you know, draft week, it is what it is. Like, it, it's – you put the work in. You know, I, I trusted the work that I put in, and I wasn't going to stress. So, even, like, on draft day, you know, I see – I can read people. So, like, my family was, like, a little tense. You know, they were anxious, like, where to go. You know, I was chilling. Like, I didn't call my agent. Um, I, I talked to him the night before the draft. I said, you know, what teams? He told me the teams. I said, cool. And then the whole draft day, I was playing a video game, just relaxing chilling uh, because I knew that it was it was it was no 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 need to stress I put all the work in whatever happens going to happen now it's nothing that you can do three hours before the draft is going to like change something drastically so when I got to the draft I was just chilling just waiting waiting for my time to come um, and then once the last pick came in um, I wasn't you know of course going to be a first rounder I immediately changed my mindset to all right let's go let's work you know whatever the situation we, we, we get in we're going to um, of course, try to out um, use that as motivation and um, outperform that that number. And then when I got driving to the Bulls, all of that went out the window because that, <laughs> it was a, like a, a, a dream. You know, it was something that throughout the whole draft process, talking to my agent, we never thought it was going to, you know, go down like that because where we were projected at and the teams we were talking to. And, you know, when it came, he called me. He was like, yo, I, uh, you're staying home. <laughs> I was like, for real? He was like, yeah, I have to keep a poker face. And then once it came on the TV, it was just a, it was just like I, that moment probably was single, single handedly the, the best moment in my life because I really can't explain how it was. Like in that moment, I tried my best to try to live that moment so I could remember it, but I just can't explain it. So when give us a little bit of what it was like for you when you made your first visit to the Advocate Center. You walked around the United Center as a Bulls player. How, how was that experience, and what did it feel like to you? Uh, it was crazy. I remember, <laughs> like, it was yesterday. Uh, we came, came back. I came in with AK, May, um, AK met Coach Donovan, and um, I seen all the Jordan stuff, and I, I just seen all of the, the history here. You know, I'm a, I'm, I was born – I mean, I'm from Chicago, so – I'm seeing all the jerseys, just seeing all the different pictures and the historical um, things on the wall. And um, I just wanted to just – I was excited. You know, I was excited for my new journey. I was excited to get to work and try to just, you know, continue to prove because no matter where you're at in life, it's always, you know, more naysayers and it's always more for you to, to, to prove um, the more you, you, you continue to strive for your goals in life. And I knew that you know, once I stepped into the AC, that it was going to be time for me to continue to try to prove people wrong. And um, me being driving 38, that, that's motivation that would always stick with me. That's that's always going to be there because um, I understand that um, I should have went higher, but um, it just used as motivation now. You know, I going way back to training camp, Billy Donovan praised your maturity. He said, you're like a sponge. You want to get as much information as you can. You talk to him and the other assistant coaches and try to learn as much as you can about the NBA game. People looked at the depth chart and thought, well, Io's not going to play much as a rookie. He might be playing some G League games for the Windy City Bulls. And, and you quickly established yourself as a guy that deserved to be in the rotation. Now with the injuries that we've had, you've started, what, the last 14 games? Um, have you even surprised yourself with how quickly you've adapted to the NBA game and have been able to make your mark? Um, I would say um, I wouldn't think it surprised myself because I'm um, watching a lot of my college film. I like to study myself a lot. Um, I like to be my biggest um, critic because I figure if I can find out ways for to stop myself, then and if I'm very honest with myself, then it gives me an advantage before you know the opposition tries to do it. And um, I understood that, like, the college game was a, just a, a different game that much different than the NBA game. And I always knew that I was going to um, um, have a, a chance to excel better in college just because – I mean, in the NBA, then college, just because of the spacing. You know, college is, is no defensive three seconds. You know, they play block, blocks and elbows. Um, they can hard hedge a lot more than the NBA. It's just a, a – a more tighter space and the NBA than when I played the NBA a lot, it was a lot of ball screens, a lot of, a lot of space. You got guys like Vucevic, like you really can't, if you're big, you can't stay too long because he can shoot, he can pass it. And just so many skilled players in the NBA with so, so much space that I knew that um, just get under the NBA, 
um, equipment and the technology that I was going to be able to excel there. So I wouldn't say it, it, it surprised me. I was actually looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to continue to get better. How has it been for you? I know a lot of times young players come into the league and sometimes they get put in a situation on a team where they're with other young players and they're not winning. They don't have the veteran presence in the locker room. You, you've been blessed to come to a team with there's so many good veterans, so many guys that you can also lean on and learn from. How's that experience been for you this year with you know, being with DeMar and Vooch and, you know, Zach Levine? How, how's that been for you? Oh, it's been great. You know, when I first got here, I talked to Zach for like an hour, an hour, 45 minutes, like just talking to him, asking him questions, like drilling him because I wanted to learn so much because I understood that they've been somewhere that a lot of people in the NBA want to get to, you know, scoring over 10,000, 15,000 points. Um, and I just wanted to understand their, how they understood the game and how they viewed the game and how, they can give me tips if they made mistakes as a rookie. What mistake did they make, and how can um, I try to avoid those mistakes? And um, they're great veterans. They love, you know, me asking them questions. They um, they view me as a little brother, and they 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 all always give me, you know, great advice. Um, talking to all three of those guys, Vooch, um, Demar, and Zach, and uh, it's been great because I've been, like you said, I've been able to learn from guys um, who are doing it at a high level in an organization that's doing it at a high level. You know, um, one through three in the East, pretty much the whole season, and um, so that 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 winning mindset and that that winning culture and accent, we know other great players about that. That that's something at a young age, especially as a rookie. Um, that's something that can take you far. We're taping the show on Thursday afternoon. The NBA trade deadline has just passed, and the Bulls did not make any trades, which wasn't really considered a surprise. You guys just need to get healthy. When you looked around the landscape in the Eastern Conference, I don't know how closely you've been following this trade deadline, Io, but the, the huge trade, James Harden going to the Philadelphia 76ers in a package with Ben Simmons and Seth Curry and others. When you look at the landscape in the East, when you guys get healthy, you think you can still compete and have a chance to, to get to the NBA Finals? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think we can, can compete now, but of course when we get back healthy, that's going to be an a, a even scarier picture. Um, you know, if you look at the guys we have missing, like, um, it's not too many guys who we could trade for that are that are better than those guys. Um, so I just think it's all just come down to us getting healthy and um our guys, you know, going out there. I think when we get healthy, we get you know Lonzo back, we get Caruso back, we get Patrick back, we get Derek back. Like those are, you know, four, you know, great. Uh, piece to our team, great players to our team, and then if you mix that in with the, with the guys we have now, who are who have been stepping up to bigger roles, um, put that all together, and I think it's going to be it's going to be scary. Stacey, there's no question about it. The future is bright for this Bulls team. We're looking forward to the playoffs coming up. When you've got leaders like Demar Derozan and Zach Levine and uh, the great. Guys like Lonzo Ball and, and Alex Caruso are coming back. This franchise is in good hands. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the the misfortune of having all these injuries this year. But you got to give the Bulls credit. You got to give Billy Donovan credit. You got the front office credit. They didn't panic. Um, you know, guys stepped up. The one the good thing about it is the development of I.O., development of a lot of the younger players who might not have gotten playing time if they'd had all the players mm-hmm. healthy. So, you know, that's going to pay big dividends. Kobe White, you know, got a lot of minutes, got a lot of opportunities at the point guard position, two guard. So those guys are going to be battle tested when they get everybody back. Now, the big question is, is like, where, what is everybody's minutes going to look like? Because you're bringing back two very good guards. They didn't bring Lonzo to sit on the bench. No, they that's for they, sure. Yeah. And then, you know, he, this is a guy they wanted. They went out and got him. And Caruso, you know, he's proven that, you know, whether he starts, whether he comes off the bench, he's a valuable commodity to this team. And so those guys are going to have to, you know, implement themselves back in the lineup. And, and, you know, Billy's got a lot of different lineups that he can use now. You know, you've got Tristan Thompson, who just picked up. Um, You know, they're still getting used to him. 
You know, so uh, Patrick Williams is going to be on the verge of coming back at some point in the next few weeks. So that's also going to be a big addition because the Bulls have been, you know, really shorthanded at the power forward position. And the one thing that Patrick Williams brings, just like Caruso and, and, and Lonzo Ball, is he brings individual defense. He, he last year as a rookie, he guarded the top scorer every single night as a rookie. And that just shows you, you know, the confidence the coaching staff has in him and the talent that this kid has. I mean, every single night, whether it being Giannis, LeBron, it, it just didn't matter. He they stuck him on him and he he held his own as a rookie. So they'll be really, really excited to have him back. He's only played like probably six to eight games this year. Um, and when all those guys are in the lineup, you know, you know, the, we had a stat the other night when, you know, the whole team is in the lineup, you know, one through five, they're undefeated. They're like seven or eight and oh. You know, they're like 16, 17, and 7, you know, with, with Caruso and Ball in the lineup. So the numbers don't lie. The numbers prove that they're much more effective when they have all their guys. So for those of you watching on YouTube, I'm sure you missed watching uh, Timmy Whispers. He's not, yeah, not, not on yeah. this week's show. Yeah, no, you know, no, no lewd comments or no, crazy no. stuff. He's been, he's been banned to another room because his comments <laughs> – did not go unnoticed in the last show, and uh, we decided that we were going to put him in a little timeout. So Timmy Whispers is in a timeout right now. He'll be back next week. Stacy's on the road, of course, with the Bulls, and Timmy Whispers doing some business down in Orlando. But we'll be back, episode 71, a brand new show. We'll have a top flight guest lined up for you. You can count on that. Always bring you the best guests. Stacy working overtime to bring you the yes. best on Give yes, Me the Hot Sauce. Yes. Well, and, and this week, you know, I, you know, we, we thought about it, you know, how we were going to do this show with everybody's going to be out and you know for for our new listeners who may not have seen those interviews with you know with Damar and, and Zach Io and Caruso we just decided to make kind of like mesh them all together so people can see that and then we'll get right back at it you know when we come back from this West Coast trip hopefully coming back from this West Coast trip we won the majority of those games and we're coming back on a positive note because as you know, Mark, the season is winding down. That is. You know, Miami, Miami, Miami lost uh, last the other night. So, you know, that's big for us. And we, we've got to continue. The goal for us right now is is we don't want to be in six, seven, eight, or playing. <laughs> no, you don't want to be <laughs> you know, there. No. You, you, want to be, you want to be one, two, three, four, four. five. Because, yeah. because four and five is going to play each other. And if you end up, let's just say the playoffs started today. Play Boston. And, and we play Boston in the first round. And I, I like our chances against Boston in the first round in a four or five matchup. But if we slip to six, now you're looking at playing a Milwaukee or Philadelphia yeah, in tough. the first round. Or, you know, I mean, you don't really want Miami. Mm -hmm. You don't want to play those teams in the first round. Now, eventually, as a four or five, you're going to meet one of those teams in the second round. OK, but you don't but wanna, then you'll take your chances. Yeah, you'll take your round. chances yeah. in the second round. You don't want to play them in the yeah. first round yeah. and not saying Boston is going to be an easy out. But you got to like it. You, you know, Bulls fans got to like your chances against Boston. Right. I think they match up a lot better. Yeah, match Boston up a lot better because it's all about matchups. Yeah. It's all because we I mean, we haven't beat Philadelphia at all this year. And, you know, Milwaukee, we had our chances twice to beat them. I, I, I honestly I feel like in a playoff series. Um, our chances against against Milwaukee is a lot better than it is against Philadelphia. Right, I feel like I feel rolling. I feel like our chances is a lot better against Miami than it is against Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is the one matchup I'm mm -hmm. concerned with. Yeah, because that's Embiid's the one. Them. Yes, that's the <laughs> one team that if you say, Stacy, your honest assessment, you know which team fear you do you fear? I don't fear Miami. I think we can play with them, especially with a healthy roster. I think we can play with Milwaukee. I think we can play with everybody. Brooklyn, everybody. But that Philadelphia team, they have that one guy that's a neutralizer. Yeah. And we have not been able to slow him down. And, you know, he's capable of scoring 40 or 50 points. And they'll get those guys around him. James Harden is starting to look like the old James Harden when he first got to Houston. You know, he's not looking. We saw him the other, we saw him, you know, a few nights ago when we played him. And the one thing I took away from that is, is that, you know, he's looking to be a facilitator. You know, he's averaging 10 assists a game. He's like second in the NBA in assists. So he's basically a point guard. And on that team, it's allowing Maxi to play to his strengths as being the off guard. Because he's not really, he, he's a point guard, but he's not the point guard that James Harden is. Mm -hmm. You know, so now they allow him to, he's become the third option over Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris, to me, 
is going to have to find a role because he looks like a fish out of water. He does not look comfortable since they've gotten James Harden. When we, you know, I've seen him play, I've seen him on TV. He just doesn't look like the same guy that he was before Harden got there. So he's going to have to. Doc Rivers going to do a, a, a miraculous coaching job trying to get this kid involved because they need him if they want to go deep in the playoffs. You can't you cannot discredit what he brings to the team. They've got to find ways to utilize his skill set. So the playoffs are right around the corner. We are really excited about seeing the Bulls back among the Eastern Conference powers. It's something we'll be counting down as we get closer to the start of April. Uh, The playoffs will begin in mid-April. Pavel, why don't you get us out of here? Episode 70, give me the hot sauce in the books. Stacey. Drive home safe in Chicago. Beep, beep. (laughs) Jimmy G. Buckets gets buckets. Like that, Pavel. Oh, my goodness. Give me the hot sauce. Oh,